Hi, I'm Rudy Jones, and welcome to That Was the Week That Was in South Carolina College Baseball for April 30th. Well, make it May the 1st. Uh, Happy May Day to any comrades who may be watching. This is part of my coverage of college baseball in South Carolina. Most of my coverage is through the PalmettoStateBaseball.com website. I provide schedules, scores, rankings, news, and other items related to the 33 college baseball teams in South Carolina. That will be 34 at some point whenever Clinton College and Rock Hill adds its program. Uh, Furman, still no word on that yet. Maybe they'll eventually get a baseball program back. I also provide updates through Twitter at Palmetto Base and offer a weekly Palmetto State Baseball podcast, usually on Thursdays. You can contact me by email at rudyjones at palmettostatebaseball.com. I want to hear your compliments, comments, criticisms about what I do to help me do a better job of covering college baseball in South Carolina. I'm sorry I didn't get to post this until after midnight on Sunday. There are various contributing factors that prevented me from getting this done earlier. Uh, Church service ran a little long on Sunday night, and there are a lot of things to do in regards to conference tournaments. And I've been working busier than a one-armed paper hanger trying to get things caught up, and I just didn't get it done before midnight. I apologize. I'm going to spend most of the time on the weekend, but let's hit a few moments from earlier in the week. Bob Jones snapped an 11-game losing streak, covering more than a month with a win over Brevard on Tuesday. Turned out to be the final regular season game for the Bruins, who had their final two weekend games with Mid-Atlantic Christian rained out. BJU had 11 games canceled this season because of weather or other reasons. Uh, they finished 4-25. and I know they were hoping to do better than that in their third season, but they did finish on a winning note, so that's good. Also on Tuesday, Clemson got a run rule win over Kennesaw State. They fell behind early but roared back to beat them. Uh, they, and... Uh, Winthrop extended its winning streak to four by beating Charlotte on Tuesday. Wofford got the first of two midweek run rule wins, and Wake Forest run ruled Coastal Carolina in a meeting of top six ranked teams nationally. Uh, Wake Forest is playing awfully well right now. Coastal's not playing bad, but they just ran into a buzzsaw with the Demon Deacons. Uh, also in midweek on Wednesday, David Lewis of North Greenville hit three home runs and a win over North Georgia. On to the weekend. Clemson continued his hot play of late, winning two of three at Boston College in the ACC. That's the fourth straight ACC series win for the Tigers. They're now 11-10 of the conference, and they have three series remaining. They are solidly, solidly in the discussion for the NCAA tournament now, and it's not beyond reason to believe they could play their way into a hosting status if they continue to play well. They have a great RPI, so that is in their favor. They do need to close it out, though, uh, by finishing strong in the ACC. A week ago, South Carolina was basically on top of the world in college baseball after a sweep of Florida. Fast forward to this week, and the Gamecocks were reeling. Their starting pitchers were roughed in all three games at Auburn, or against Auburn, excuse me, and the Gamecocks were struggling to get any key hits when the home runs weren't coming. And we've seen in the past that when USC doesn't hit home runs, they have trouble scoring. Baseball could be an humbling game, but it also could be a game of unlikely heroes. Freshman Will Tippett was thrust into the lineup at second base because of injuries to the infielders. Basically, the Gamecocks didn't have anybody else to put in there. Uh, since becoming a regular, he was 1 for 19, entering a seventh inning at bat against Auburn on Sunday. And he's hitting 130. Well, technically, .1296. Almost 130 rounded up. So, what happened? He hit his first career home run. It was a three-run shot to give USC the lead, and the Gamecocks held on for an 8-7 win to salvage the series finale. All four of the SEC teams that Carolina is contending with for top eight national seed status swept their opponents on uh, this past weekend, so the Gamecocks really needed to get at least one win out of the Auburn game. So uh, getting a win on, after a, a difficult weekend was, was uh, something to give USC to feel a little bit better about themselves about. And hopefully they'll get some of their injured players back at some point. Coastal Carolina got three home runs out of Nick Lucky, one each day in its series at Louisiana. The third one was big, came in the ninth inning and tied the game up, sent it to extra innings, and the Chanticleers went on to win that game at 11 innings, 3-2, to two, to give them a 2-1 edge in that Sunbelt Conference series. College of Charleston dropped two or three games against Elon. They fell into fourth place in the Colonial Athletic Association. They're now a game behind the Phoenix. USC Upstate won of two or three, won two of three in the Big South Conference series with PC. They fell behind seven to one early in the middle game on Saturday, but rallied for a nine to seven win in extra innings with a walk-off home run. Walford and the Citadel played outside the Southern Conference. The Terriers joined the ranks of the uh, 
teams hammered by Wake Forest when they got beat on Saturday night, but Wofford bounced back with a good win over High Point on Sunday. The Citadel lost two games at NC State before the weekend finale was canceled because of weather. Both Charleston Southern and Winthrop had the week off. Moving on to Division II, regular season champion Newberry played host to an early round bracket of the South Atlantic Conference Tournament, and they were uh, went through the event unbeaten, 3-0. Uh, they beat Lador Ryan, scoring two runs in the bottom of the eighth inning on Sunday to avoid a second game. They won that game 7-6, to six, and they'll advance to the tournament championship series, the best of three series. In the other bracket at Wingate, uh, Lenore <coughs> – pardon me about that. This is live. In the other bracket, uh, Lincoln Memorial knocked off number two seed Wingate in that tournament, so they will be the opponent for the Wolves when they play that best of three series at Smoky Stadium in Kodak, Tennessee, beginning uh, next Sunday as it goes out. North Greenville had already wrapped up the Conference Carolina's regular season title, but they still had a momentous weekend. Senior John Michael Fale became NCAA Division II's all-time RBI leader with a two-run home run in the opening, uh, first inning of the Saturday doubleheader opener. That gave him 310 career RBIs, one more than the record that was held by Brian Fogle of Erskine. Coincidentally, also from the state, of course. For good measure, Fale hit two homers and drove in seven runs in the nightcap of Saturday's doubleheader. He now has 317 RBI. He also has 73 career home runs, and based on what is listed in the NCAA record book, that is two behind the Division II record for a career. Don't know if anyone else has passed that during this season or not. Uh, also in Conference Carolinas, Erskine split a series with Emmanuel. USC Aiken entered the weekend with a chance to win the Peach Belt Conference regular season championship outright, but they ran into a red-hot Lander team. The Bear Hi Bearcats won their first two games of the series and they extended their winning streak to seven games, and they were a strike away from winning on Sunday. But Justin Bird lined a two-out single to drive in two runs in the bottom of the ninth, and the Pacers salvaged that game, uh, so that was good one for them. Also in the Peach Belt. USC Buford entered its season on a 16-game losing streak, and Claflin finished its season on a 10-game losing streak. Benedict went 1-1 one one in its Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Association Series finale at uh, Kentucky State. Voorhees beat state rival Morris to snap a 13-game winless streak. Uh, most of the junior college teams took the week off, the weekend off. USC Lancaster played a midweek game and lost. Florence Darlington Tech played a midweek game and lost. And then on Saturday, FD Tech swept Salkahatchee. Columbia International won eight of its last ten games in the regular season, including two of three at point over the weekend. This week, I picked Bob Jones and Voorhees to share my Team of the Week award for April 24th to 30th because they snapped those long losing streaks. Uh, sure, I could have gone with North Greenville or Newberry or one of the other teams that, that seems to be right up there with it every week. But I just want to recognize some teams that haven't had a lot of good things happen to them this year. I'm not saying this is big, but I just want to recognize them and, and let them know that there's somebody out there watching and uh, hoping they'll continue to improve and do better. I'll keep updating my team rankings for NCAA Division I schools in the state until at least the end of the regular season, but I did make my final rankings for the other levels this week. North Granville finished the top NCAA Division II. Uh, Columbia International finished atop the division for NAIA, NCCAA, and NCAA Division III teams. And Florida Starlington Tech, no surprise, finished atop the rankings for junior college teams. There aren't a whole lot of games coming up in this midweek. Coastal Carolina plays host to Charlotte, and Walford is at Tennessee on Tuesday. On Wednesday, the Citadel is at Charleston Southern, and South Carolina plays at Winthrop. So, where does all this stuff leave teams going ahead? Clemson's in fourth place in the ACC as the Atlantic Division. They're five and a half games behind Wake Forest and in seventh place overall in the ACC when it comes to the seed purposes. The Tigers play host to Louisville this uh, coming weekend, and Louisville is two games behind Clemson in the Atlantic standings. Uh, South Carolina, uh, Sunday win assured the Gamecocks of being one of 12 teams to qualify for the SEC uh, tournament in Hoover in May. Uh, the Gamecocks can lose no more than 15 games. They had a game rained out, so right now they're 14-6. and six. Uh, And both Missouri and Miss, Ole Miss have already lost 16 games. So the most they can win is 14, and the most Carolina can lose is 15. So both Ole Miss and Missouri 
uh, would not beat Carolina out first spot, so the Gamecocks are in. In the standings, USC is one and a half games behind East leader Flo uh, Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt 16-5, Carolina's 14-6. And USC is a game behind West leader LSU at 15 and 5. So right now, Carolina's in third in the uh, chase for the top sport, four spots in the um, tournament. The uh, top four teams avoid the single elimination, single elimination play in round. So it's important to finish in the top four to give you a chance to, if you do mess up in that first game, to come back. This coming weekend, the Gamecocks play at Kentucky, a team that's 11 and 10 coming off a sweep at Vanderbilt. And, but they've been playing pretty well, but just had some tough luck in the uh, SEC. Coastal Carolina uh, has a one-game lead over Southern Mississippi in a tightly bunched Sun Belt Conference. Georgia Southern is two games back. Texas State is behind by three. Uh, Appalachian State is like another half game back, and there's a bunch of other teams about four games back. This coming week, Coastal plays host to Appalachian State. In the Southern Conference, both Sanford and Mercer went two and one, and moved a half game ahead of Walford in the standings. Uh, they're both, um, let's see, it should be nine and five, or 10 and five, excuse me, Walford is eight and four, trying to wing it right now. Uh, but Walford has played three fewer conference games, so they can catch up with that. This coming week, Walford is at UNC Greensboro. Uh, the Central's in eighth place, but it's only two games out of fourth. VMI visits the peninsula this weekend in the baseball version of the battle for the coveted Silver Shaco. Uh, USC Upstate sits two games behind first place Campbell in the Big South Conference. The Spartans' next series is at third place Gardner Webb, and the Bulldogs are two games behind Upstate. So, Upstate's got some work to do. Just make sure it even just holds its uh, holds its own. Charleston Southern and Winthrop step out of their uh, bye weekends after last week to visit High Point and Radford, respectively, in the conference. While PC is away from conference play this coming weekend when they visit ACC Power Miami. Several below the uh, NCAA Division I level conference tournaments begin this weekend. Columbia International's strong finish earned the Rams the 10th seed for the Appalachian Athletic Conference Tournament that begins Tuesday in Kingsport, Tennessee. The Rams open with a 10 a.m. game against Point, and that happens to be the team that the Rams won two of three against over this past weekend to qualify for the tournament. On Wednesday, the Conference Carolinas Tournament begins at Carroll Mott Health Park in Gastonia. Six-seeded Erskine uh, plays uh, Francis Marion at 5 o'clock. And then North Greenville does not play until Thursday at 7. Like the South Atlantic Conference, the Peach Belt Conference is holding two four-team events in the early rounds at campus sites to pair the, t the field down to two for a best-of-three championship series. The sites are at America's Georgia, and that's Georgia Southwestern, and Young Harris, which is Young Harris College. USC Aiken and Lander are matched in a first-round game at Young Harris. Of course, Lander just won two of three over USC Aiken over the weekend. The NJCAA Region 10 Tournament for Division I begins Friday at Lexington County Baseball Stadium. State teams play at 9 a.m., 4 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. that day. It's uh, two state teams against each other. The 12.30 game is the uh, two North Carolina schools against each other. For specifics on that tournament and other conference tournaments, Check out PalmettoStateBaseball.com for the schedules, brackets, things like that. Again, you can follow me on Twitter at Palmetto Base or email me at Rudy Jones at PalmettoStateBaseball.com. I welcome your input. I'd like to know whether you're uh, getting anything out of this coverage that I'm getting, giving. Well, that's it for this week's edition of That Was the Week That Was in South Carolina College Baseball. Again, I apologize for not getting this posted before midnight on Saturday, Sunday night. I hope your team had a great week, and I hope they have another good week this week if their season's still going on. This is Rudy Jones of PalmettoStateBaseball.com saying, nothing could be finer than college baseball in South Carolina. Good morning. God bless you.